grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. At this time, we have a little bit of business that we need to take care of. So I ask you just to hold on and play along with us. But first, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. 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 Christ is risen. risen. Lutherans are called to live in the joy and light of Christ's resurrection. Through the season of Lent, we have heard again the stories of Jesus' ministry, how he journeyed to the cross. We have recounted his pain, sorrow, agony, and death. And on this third day, Jesus Christ triumphed over death confronting us with the empty grave. Seven weeks ago, the children of Trinity led us in a Lenten preparation by putting away the ancient Greek word that means praise the Lord. The word which, is, which as Easter people flows through our veins. As our Lenten fast goes behind us, let us rise and keep the feast that is Easter and remember the resurrection of the Lord. You want to let us have our word back? It's a little bit different. You guys will get used to me. Can you tell me what that word is? Yeah, it's the Alleluia. So before we hang it up and we give it back to everybody, can you guys help me by saying it really loud and telling people what we're giving them back? Ready? If I count to three, really loud. You ready? One, two, three. Alleluia. Can you do better than that? One, two, three. You think we should have them join us? Just to make sure they all know the word? A count of three. One, two, three. Alleluia. Let's hang it back up and say, Jesus Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him <coughs> receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was I, not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And, the ver and very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Then they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. 
As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking at Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Was it for you? They went out from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. One thing that the Gospel of Mark often does is confront us with the reality of life. And he's doing so once again today. On this Easter Sunday, as we gather here at the church and anticipating a sighting of the resurrected Lord, but what we get instead is a reminder of the reality of life. Another example of those moments when we are paralyzed with fear, even as we are in awe of life. I'm sure most of you have had these moments in your life that time when the world stops and we are not sure if we are supposed to be terrified or to live in hope. A year ago, I was just minutes away from beginning a Wednesday night Lent service when my cell phone rang and I was told that my father had just passed away after heart surgery. There in that narthex, I was faced with one of those moments when the world stops and we tremble with fear. There in that moment, I was standing outside of the empty tomb with a choice to make. Do I settle for the reality of life with the reality of illness and death before me? Or do I trust in the promises of Jesus that have been made for new life, salvation, hope that is at hand? We've all been there. Whether it's facing the news of an unwelcomed health diagnosis, or a pink slip notifying us of a loss of job, or hearing that the river cannot be contained by its banks and another flood is coming. Sometimes the news is more anticipated, like the confirmation of a pregnancy or approval for an adoption, or the opening of an acceptance letter for college. Yet the results are still the same. The reality of trembling in fear, even with the anticipation and awe that curses through us. The knowledge that after this moment, life will never be the same. And Mark knew the reality of this life. There are moments when, when that stop us dead in our tracks and cause us to lose everything we know about life and logic and hope. And we are faced with moments in which we have a choice. Do we live in the disappointment and fear, or do we remember what Jesus promised us? Do we trust in that promise of love, hope, forgiveness, and grace? Do we run and hide, or do we trust that Christ will walk beside us? Do we get angry, or do we cry out to God for help? Do we believe 
or not. Today we gather and sing our hymns of resurrection and new life. We proclaim he is risen. I was told that you respond to that. We were claimed he is risen. risen (laughs) And we hear the gospel reading that leaves us outside the tomb with no sighting of the resurrected Lord. I think God, or I think Mark, does this to us on purpose. I mean, he does start his gospel with these words. This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He has told us all of what Jesus has done. He shared the teaching of Jesus. He proclaimed God's love through healing acts, meals, and pure, undeserved acceptance. Mark shares with us everything that Jesus taught his disciples, including the promise that Jesus will die and on the third day he will be raised from the dead. And it is now the third day. The lame walk, the blind could see, the deaf could hear, the ill were healed. Jesus fed thousands. He taught of God's unconditional love. He spoke of the Son of Man dying and rising again. Judas betrayed him. Peter denied him. And three times, just as Jesus said. And now it is the third day. Jesus died on the cross. And now the tomb is empty. The women gathered are stunned, frozen in place, staring at an empty tomb and hearing, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Now they are faced with a choice. To live in the reality of life, the one they know only too well, that death is final and Jesus is gone. Or they can remember what he has taught them. Do they hold on to the promise that Jesus would be raised from the third day and he would meet them in Galilee? Or do they continue to grieve his death? We all know the end of this story. We know that the women went and told the disciples what they had seen. We know that Jesus appears in the upper room with his hands extended to show the marks of the nails. We have heard this story. We know what the women did. But the story is not finished. For Mark told us this was only the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The tomb is empty. Jesus' body is gone. But the promise of the good news lives on. The promise that Jesus would be raised from the dead is our new reality. We may not get to see the hands that were pierced by the nails. We may not get to eat on the beach with the resurrected Lord. We may not be the ones who walk the road to Emmaus with him. But we still know the promise. And we are included in that promise. Jesus died and was raised from the dead. Jesus defeated the powers of death and sin. New life is ours. Salvation has come. And yet we find ourselves standing at that empty tomb. The stone is rolled away, and we hear the words, Do not be alarmed. Jesus has been raised. Now live this story. Make the choice. Do you believe in the promises of Jesus? Do you trust that Jesus has, is ready, and has already met you? It is now your turn. Go, tell the story of our resurrected Lord so that all may know the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, living, giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, <clears throat> merciful God, we pray for all people and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. We especially pray for Ukraine, Gaza, and Israel. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace, loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death, especially Carolyn McGeehy and Arlene Dahlman. Renew our trust in your promises that we live always with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another.
pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All are invited to this meal of grace. Come for it is now ready.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And now let us grow in God, care in Christ, serve in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And please join us downstairs for um, fellowship and continental breakfast. Happy Easter. <laughs>